lying partially buried in Studland Bay off the Jurassic coast, is the oldest wreck in England where part of the vessel still survives. I'm Tom Cousins, I'm a maritime archaeologist at Bournemouth University and I'm also the licensee of three protected wrecks just out here. We've got the Studland Bay, the Swash Channel and our latest one is the 13th century water wreck. So we've known for years that there's been something here and we've always been told it's just a big pile of stones. We had a bit of time left at another project working on the other protected wrecks in the area. We decided to check it out. Uh, we came across a big pile of stones but then when we looked beyond it, we started seeing all of these mortars, like mortar and pestles made out of Purbeck marble. Uh, and they're a specific type of grinding for grinding up all your food. And about two thirds of all the mortars found in the UK are, were made and carved here in Purbeck. So it's a huge export for the area, massive import, one of the most important tools in every medieval kitchen. So we have those and that's how the wreck got its name because we have over 30 just on this surface when we first dived it. And then we started seeing timbers, clinker timbers that show this is a really old significant wreck. Those timbers from the wreck from Irish forests date from about 1240 to 1270. And one of the things, although it's an Irish forest, it's from the same timber from Salisbury Cathedral. So they would have cut down the trees to Salisbury Cathedral. Some of them went into the cathedral and some of them went into building a ship. So this is probably a much larger ship than we thought, about 24 metres long, and it's the type of ship you see on the medieval ship seals. Because it's medieval 13th century, it's pre-Black Death, it's pre-industrialisation. And this is one of the oldest wrecks we have in the UK. And when we returned the next year to excavate, this is when we started finding things like the grave slabs, and they are immaculate. You can still see the chisel marks on them for the day. Um, and they were like they were carved yesterday, but they are 800 years old. Even as licensees, we can't just go down and pick stuff up. We have to have a plan, a conservation plan, and a museum for it to go into. Any work on this site has to be done for the benefit of the country and the world the wider world, but it has to be done for the benefit. It can't just be for, I want something on a mantelpiece. It's, this is gonna go into a museum. This is gonna be a big display. Because this is carrying a cargo of stone, used to build all the abbeys, all the religious buildings, cathedrals. Westminster Abbey, for example, is being built heavily out of Purbeck marble. Canterbury Cathedral's got a lot of Purbeck stone in there. So this stone is massive medieval industry. And this is the only evidence we've really got between the quarry and it appearing in the monasteries and in the cathedrals. It's always been a bit of a, well, what happened between the two? And now we've got how it was transported, what type of mixed cargo is going to be on board, all this other stuff we can start learning from this about life as seen in the Middle Ages. It was very, very exciting and very to seeing the site and researching all the finds that we were finding. So with my work at Bournemouth University, I'm trying to encourage the next generation of divers and archaeologists into searching this area for our maritime history. We've got everything from the Bronze Age, the Iron Age, Roman, onwards. We know is in this bay somewhere, and we've just got to go out there and find it. Even sites like the Mortarek we've known about for years, they just needed someone to go down and look at it to actually say, oh, this is actually something significant. So there's always stuff out here to discover every day and get that next generation into diving, searching, and doing the research for the archaeology of Paul Harbour and of the UK, and as a ship, the wider world in general.